Hi guys, this is Peter, another week, another stage tracks tutorial. Today I would like to show you multi-track songs. So first, before um, setting up a multi-track song, I would like to talk a little bit about audio routing in stage tracks. Um, you can find the routing features in settings and then audio routing. And uh, what you see here is um, I have currently connected an audio interface, my keyboard in the background, the Yamaha MODX, and uh, it acts as a multi-channel audio interface. So uh, whenever you have attached a multi-channel audio interface, you can route a main output and an auxiliary output to different channels. You can see it here. I have mapped my main output to the Modi X12 channels and the auxiliary output is routed to the 3-4 channels. Uh, when you don't have a multi-channel audio interface but you have an older iPad uh, with a headphone output, uh, you can use this headphone output in addition to a, multi uh, to a stereo audio interface. So if you have a headphone connected, like I did now, it will usually have precedence over uh, any connected USB interface. So uh, there is only this output available. Uh, but if I enable combine USB and headphone outputs, now I have three outputs available in my case. The two outputs, from the Modi X and the headphone outputs, outputs. So with a stereo USB interface, you could use that, for example, for your main output and use the headphone output for a click track or something like that. Okay, but I don't need it. I have a multi-channel audio interface. Now, the idea behind the track routing in stage tracks is that you usually want to have a click track routed somewhere else than all the other tracks of your backing uh, tracks. And um, therefore, it is possible uh, to set up your routing for each of the six tracks that uh, Stage Tracks offers, either to main out or auxiliary out. And um, the idea is you might want to have some special processing, for example, for the bass or drums or something like that, then you can route them to a different output pair. And uh, all other tracks can go to the main output pair. Um, what I would recommend um, to think about a scheme for all your songs and stick to that scheme. So, for example, track one should always be drums, track two always bass, and so on. That makes it easy to um, disable certain types of tracks, for example drums, if you play on an evening uh, with a drummer and on evenings where you don't play with a drummer you just enable it. Because that's um, the reason there is this off setting for each track. You can disable this track and uh, this off setting will be uh, adhered to by every multi-track song you have. Um, therefore, to make it easier to remember which type of instrument is routed to which tracks, you can rename tracks. So let's say I want to have my drums on track one, track two should be bass, track three guitar, and track four is keys. Usually I don't need more than that. Track six should be reserved for a click track if I need it. And because track six is a click track, I say I want to route it to the auxiliary output. And uh, what I also like to do is have a little bit uh, more processing for my bass track. That's why I will also route it to the auxiliary output bass and uh, click uh, conveniently are running in mono so I can pan them left and right and have available um, my, my separate processing for them. Um, so now let's create a song. We go to songs, press plus and tap on create multi-track song. 
we will create the song just the two of us. Just the two of us. The artist name doesn't matter at the moment. So it's created. I go to the song details and here we see this item configure multi-track playback. That's where I add my audio files to the different tracks. You see the names we have defined uh, are displayed here. So it is easy uh, to see which type of track should be loaded into which um, slot. So let's start with drums. Just the two of us drums will be here. The bass is number two. Bass, the guitar. Uh, where is the guitar? I don't see it. It doesn't matter. We will go to the keys. Okay, and that's it for now. Um, the waveform has been generated from the first track we imported, the drums. Um, I don't think it looks very nice. I, I don't see the different sections of this song in this waveform. Let's try the bass. Maybe this will be a better waveform. Uh, let's see the keys maybe. No, bass was better. I like to stick with that. Now, um, I told you about my click track um, and bass. They are routed to auxiliary output. So I will pen my uh, bass track to the left and the click will always be on the right. Uh, so I can separate them in the mixing board. Okay. Uh, here the track mutes um, are for our uh, um, tracks we imported. Uh, Empty tracks are disabled, gray. You can't do anything with them. Tracks that we have loaded are red. And uh, if uh, the mute is engaged, we don't hear it. Let's listen to it. Okay, you, you don't hear it on the recording because it's on the audio interface. Uh, anyway, if, if I want to mute something, I enable it and unmute it here. Uh, what can I do? else. Uh, I can adjust the volume for each track separately and I can edit a track equalizer. Um, what's quite useful is you can, when editing the equalizer, you can solo the current track. So you only will hear this. And there is this revert button which will reset uh, your equalizer. If you um, and if you press it after resetting it, if you press the button again, it will revert to the last known state. So it's quite handy to compare your equalizer settings. Um, okay, that's basically it for configuring your tracks. Um, uh, some uh, special options you have in the big player uh, is um, the if you want to change the EQ, um, you need to first select uh, the track you want to manipulate. Um, so that's uh, why pressing this button, which opens the EQ usually for a track, shows you the multi-track overview, and then you need to select Edit Equalizer. And another thing, um, the volume, that's um, good to know, the song volume will affect all of your tracks. So it doesn't make any difference to using the song volume of a normal song or a multi-track song. It will adjust the overall volume. Uh, the, the track volumes always need to be adjusted here in the multi-track setup. Um, apart from that, multi-track songs will behave just like uh, your usual songs with uh, one exception. The processing is a little bit limited. You cannot um, change the tempo of uh, the song and you cannot pitch shift it. Um, this has some uh, processing reasons. The iPads are a little bit limited in um, processing power and due to the fact that in stage tracks you can crossfade and crossfading means two songs are played at the same time. Uh, there are up to 12 multi-track uh, up to 12 tracks playing during a crossfade and enabling 12 time compression and pitch shift algorithms 
might uh, lead to a little bit of uh, crackles on slower iPad devices. Therefore, it's not possible to do. Apart from that, you can do everything uh, with multi-track songs uh, that you also do with, uh, with your usual songs like uh, adding lyrics using MIDI and uh, uh, also uh, attaching PDFs. So I hope um, this was quite uh, a bit of a useful information for you. And uh, I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.